Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Conservative Corner. I'm Elliot Margolis. I'm here with my co-host, Gail Burke. And we've got two subjects that we want to talk about today. One subject will be the teacher's strike in Beverly, <coughs> which there's also one in Marblehead and Gloucester. And the other is the election that we just had. We're going to start with um, the teacher's strike because that gets me kind of cranky. Uh, and you know what happens when I get cranky. So here's the thing. I blame the mayor and the school committee for lack of leadership in dealing with the, school, uh, with the, the teachers' strike. This should never happen. Teachers have a right to have a contract, and the mayor and the school committee know when the contract is coming up, they've got to work to make sure that they settle the contract before you have something like this for a strike. The problem is our education system in this country stinks. And to keep kids out of school even longer is really unreasonable and irrational. We have to get the kids back to school but the mayor has to show some leadership. This mayor has not shown leadership. I will admit, however, that the mayor of Gloucester hasn't shown any leadership either. Uh, and I don't honestly know anything about Marblehead. But you know what? Our kids are suffering. Now, the question is, are we going to have to eliminate one or two vacations? Or are we going to have to have them go to school in July. I don't know what the answer is, but there is no excuse for having a strike. Now, some people will say, and my co-host is one of those, that says it's illegal to strike. And she's right. It is illegal to strike. But would you work without a contract? I don't think so. Go ahead, Gail. May I speak? Yes, Thank you, you may speak. Thank you very I'll much. give you a couple of minutes. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> well, uh, first of all, uh, I think my biggest concern is, like you said, the children are out of school. This is day number nine. That's a long time, particularly after two years, almost two years of COVID being out of school. Uh, these children are suffering from it. And, and these are times that can't be made up <clears throat> just like a snap of a finger. Uh, I don't believe that the teachers should strike. I think they, they have, um, <clears throat> they need to get together in the collective bargaining and come to a conclusion. Do the teachers want too much? I think so. Does the city not want to give them too much? I don't know what the thinking of this mayor is. They keep saying they're going to get together and then it falls apart. All I know is that <clears throat> what they're doing is illegal in the state of Massachusetts and they shouldn't be doing it. And they ha we have to have concerns for the children because <clears throat> the children are the ones who are suffering. Now, you <clears throat> if they decide to go through the month of June and longer, that's, when, that's okay. To eliminate one of the school vacations, I don't think that will go over very big. So let's get together, guys, and get these children back to school. Okay, well, Gail... <clears throat> You're right that it's illegal, right. okay? But my question is, so what? And I'll, I'll, let me explain. The President of the United States has broken laws in this country the four years he's been in office. The Vice President has broken laws. Congress has broken laws. Now, that's our leadership. And if our leaders can break the laws, why can't we? They're the ones that are supposed to show us the right way to go, and the right way to go is breaking the law. So Congress is at fault, the president is at fault, and we're, you know, the teachers are just following the leader. How, how long should the teachers be without a contract? <clears throat> they need a contract, but they are breaking the law, and just because other leaders are breaking the law doesn't mean that the teachers and the teachers' unions have to do the same. 
And the school unions are different than regular unions in that children are the ones who suffer. And that's not good. So No, it, it's it's not let's good. Let's get this let's get this thing done. But if your leadership is <clears throat> lax in following the law, um, you know, they they're the ones we're supposed to look up to. And fortunately, uh, we're getting rid of the leadership in the United States in another month and a half. Yeah. So that's good. <clears throat> okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's go on uh, so and talk about the So we've determined that I'm right and she's wrong, so we can move on. <laughs> you All have right. every right to be wrong. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> now let's talk about the election. Uh, let me it, just state a few things here about the election, okay? Oh, <clears throat> Since right. you took the lead in the... The uh, first subject. Let me do, take the lead. Yeah, in but if one. I forget what I wanted to say, you're in trouble. Go ahead. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Donald Trump won the presidency. Uh, he improved his 20, 2020 performance in both red and blue states and captured seven swing states, all the swing states he got, <clears throat> to reach the 270 electoral votes. But he didn't stop there. The final results are Donald Trump, 312 votes. Kamala Harris, 226 votes. He also won the popular vote, something that no Republican has done in a very long time. She, he, Kamala Harris lost to Trump in a stunning, stunning upset, just as Hillary Clinton did <clears throat> when she was determined to be the party, first woman to be her party's uh, presidential nominee in 2016. The former president romped through the swing states, winning all of them and building a more diverse coalition of voters than any Republican nominee in 20 years. I say my hat's off to Donald Trump and to his supporters. Okay, now if you remember correctly, because I know I do, Okay, Barack Obama, you remember him. He said that elections have consequences. Okay, I think we can all agree to that. Now, one of the consequences of an election is the person in charge can choose his own cabinet. Okay, B Barack Obama chose his, uh, Joe Biden chose his. Why is this a, a problem for the Democrats? Don't they understand they lost? They lost big. Now, you know, sometimes it's a good idea not to have a politician in a cabinet position, but to have a business person in, the, in that position. And that's what a, a lot of these uh, appointments have been, business people. Uh, Elon Musk. Ravaswamy uh, in, in Doge, okay? Yeah. Now, what's their purpose? Their purpose is to find uh, the incompetence, find duplication. Find waste, a lot of waste. Uh, if you basically find the waste and get rid of it. Tell me something, what's the harm in that? Would you rather have your money go towards helping the homeless, feeding the hungry, uh, taking care of the ill, or would you rather have the money going towards duplication, uh, extra people working for no particular purpose? I used to work for the state, and I got to tell you, trust me when I tell you this, the waste in state government is unbelievable. Federal government, even worse. Even worse. <laughs> so to have Doge, uh, the Department of Government Efficiency, is a good thing. It's a smart thing. It's something a businessman would do, but a politician will not do. And you know what? Trump won the election. Give him a chance. Let's see what he can do. Well, we know some of the things he wants to do. <clears throat> and it's a far cry from his first, uh, <clears throat> his first time as president. He went in as a novice politician. He learned a lot in the last eight years <clears throat> from when he was president before. 
because I don't think he really understood how dark and the deep state really is. And he took advice from people that he trusted. Well, some of them turned out to be bad, bad people. Uh, <clears throat> so now he has a much better grasp on things. And he has shown that uh, he's nominating people that he believes will go in and, as you said, clean out the waste, the duplication, whether it be <clears throat> whatever, whether it be in the FBI, whether it be in the uh, whatever group. The IRS, we don't know who, what's going to happen with the IRS. And I'm sure, and I know, that the politicians in D.C. are trembling with fear. <clears throat> this is when the mental health crisis begins, with they're already resisting him. They're already gathering together to resist whatever he does. And we know that it's not just happening in D.C. It's happening here in the state of Massachusetts. Already our governor and our mayor have told us they are not going to comply with what ICE wants. Another example of them breaking the law or breaking the yep. rules, yep. and they're our leaders, yep. so if they can do it, why can't we? Well, I don't believe in that theory, as you know, but uh, nevertheless, we have to make sure that, and these people, they're doing so at risk, and the risk is going to happen to us because we cannot have these unlawful things happening, uh, particularly in states like Massachusetts, sanctuary states, sanctuary cities uh, that are harboring <clears throat> the illegals that are coming over our borders by the millions. And we know that. And we know that some of them are bad, bad people. We also know, uh, and not too many of the liberal news uh, outlets will talk about the 300,000 missing children that have come across our borders. They haven't been vetted properly. And even this administration, Biden has admitted they don't know where these children are. That's disgusting. That's something that should never have happened. They blamed uh, Trump for separating families. Well, many times these people coming over the border with little children were not their families. And by the way, it was Obama that started that. that remember the children in cages? Yeah, that Obama was Obama built that those. started the children with That's cages. Right. But the Democrats blamed Trump for that. Yeah. You see, here's the one thing that really, well, not the one thing that bothers me, but one of many things that bother me uh, is... The Democrats, if you'll notice, they never talk policy. All they do is they talk about this guy's no good, this woman's no good, this is incompetent, that's incompetent, uh, this is a criminal, this is a sex addict, you know, you name it. They try to disparage people, but they can't talk issues. Did you ever ask yourself why they can't talk issues? Why did Kamala Harris never talk issues? Because she couldn't. Number one, she wasn't, didn't know them. Number two, she knows she's on the wrong side of them. And number three, she knows that they were losers. So what they do is they disparage people. And so now, according to Carmela, we have a, a, a criminal in, you know, in, as president. No, he's not a criminal. First of all, one of the key things that he was allegedly found guilty of the statute of limitations was over. They really had no legal right to charge him with those crimes. Well, you see, <clears throat> there again, uh, it's not policy. It's that you hate somebody that much that you will go to any lengths to try and destroy him. And not just his policies or what he wants to do, destroy the man, destroy his family. They went after his children as well. And God love him, Donald Trump withstood it all. He put up with it. He put up with it during his four, first four years. He put up with it <clears throat> uh, these last four years. And they just, they laughed at him. 
They said he's a nothing, he'll never be president. We have our leaders, Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden, he will never be our president. Well, look what happened. He was president for four years, he lost the next election, he's come back strong. And Talking about Chuckles humor, okay? <laughs> um, isn't it interesting that all of a sudden, now that Chuckles is not going to be the uh, head of the... The majority leader. The, the, the majority leader, now he wants to be bi bipartisan? <laughs> That's what they always you know, do. I mean, it was okay not to be bipartisan when he wasn't the leader, but now Chuckles has changed his tune a little bit. And, and you know... The House Minority Leader. The definition leader. of politics is the art of compromise. Yeah. Well, it's not only Republicans that have to compromise, it's Democrats also. You know, you know the old saying, he said this and she said this, well, somewhere in the middle is probably the truth. Well, if both sides aren't 100% happy with something, now you get the right answer. Well, you see, Hakeem Jeffries, the House Minority Leader, said the same thing. Well, we have to get together and learn how to talk with each other. What happened the last four years? There was no talking together. Every time the Republicans proposed something, shot it down. Just shot it down. But when the Democrats proposed something, <clears throat> they may have disagreed with it. Some of them did, some of them didn't, didn't. But if it didn't pass, the media got into it. Those Republicans, and they're stopping everything. You know, the Republicans have been behind the eight ball for quite a while. But now this time, with the president owning the White House, owning the House, and the Senate, now maybe we can make some progress and get rid of some of the stuff that happened the last four years. Well, We've you know, got to do that. The, um, the, the uh, Morning Joe and Micah is her Mika. name? Mika. Uh, they Mika. went down to Mar-a-Lago to talk to yeah. Trump. That's a good thing. You know, you talk to the people you don't agree with and maybe you can come up with something that at least an understanding. Then you have this idiot called Rosie O'Donnell, okay, <laughs> who, who now will have nothing to do with the MSNBC, which is okay, <laughs> but because they went to talk to, to Trump. What, what is this all about? Why can't we work together? And of course, Ellen DeGeneres has decided oh, to leaving. move to, to Great Britain. Bye bye. Bye bye. Don't you know, let the door um, hit you on the way out. Uh, that probably helps us more than hurts us. <laughs> but that being said, is that the way? What's what is democracy? Okay, the Democrats say that Trump is going to destroy democracy, but they're the ones doing it. Who who is the one? Who is the party that didn't let RFK run as a Democrat? Okay. What happened to democracy there? Who's the party that <clears throat> wouldn't allow primaries uh, for the Democrat Party? They appointed Joe. Joe, you're it. You're going right. to be the leader. And then when things started to go down the tubes, they appointed Carmela. Uh, she never went, went into a primary. She didn't get primary. That's democracy. She, when she did go to, into a primary in the 2020 election, uh, she lost. She, she didn't get into a primary, she, really. Well, she, 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 after that's the, right. After the first debate, she was she history. She left, yeah. Um, she, she said that's and it. And by the way, just so you, you're, if you remember this, Kamala called Biden a racist yeah. during the debate. Yeah. Okay? She's talking about so, busing, yeah. Why did the Democratic Party tell Biden she was going to be his vice president? <clears throat> Real simple. She's black. She's a she's minority. A she's a woman. Yep. Uh, identity politics. The dumbest thing in the world is identity politics. You have to put somebody in office who is competent. I don't care whether you're a man or woman. <clears throat> I don't care if you're black, white, or Asian. I don't care what, you could be gay, I don't care. 
I care about whether you're good at your job. And I don't put anybody into a job that might be a minority but isn't good at their job. We're running a country here, okay? And we're the best country in the world, at least for a while, but... Uh, we need to get better. We, we need to have quality people. Now, if you take a look at who Trump has in his cabinet, a lot of them are not politicians. That's what the Democrats Business don't like. People, right. But they're good, quality people. And they don't like the fact that these people are going to be loyal to Trump. He's the president. Of course he wants people that will be loyal to him. But he's also picking people that will be loyal to the country, to the Constitution. And that's what we don't have now. So when the Democrats don't like somebody, they go after it. They go after them. They're going after Pete Hegseth. <coughs> they don't like, they didn't, certainly didn't like Matt Gates. but they're going after, um, oh, what's her name, pa uh, Pam Bondi. They don't like something about her. Well, I mean, that, and that was just yesterday that that's she an, was... That's another thing. He picked her. Remember the Democrats said that Trump doesn't like to have strong women? Mark Coben said that, yeah. one of Camilla's supporters. So, you know, you, you look at some of the women that are involved with Trump, they're all strong women. You know, Trump doesn't care whether you're a man or a woman. He cares about Can doing he, the job. That's it, yeah. And it, it's too bad that the Democrats don't. I mean, we had a real debacle with uh, the transportation secretary, Ouch. Buttigieg, but he's gay. Um, you know. <clears throat> he was a mayor of a small town, I think it was South Bend, Indiana. Yeah. That was his claim to fame. And I they mean, picked him for transportation. So what happened during the last four years? Remember East Palestine, Ohio, where there was a train wreck and all the chemicals were all over this little, little city, little town? He didn't go there. It took him almost a year to go there to see what was going yeah. on. What is it? And he's I, also I mean, the one just, that it's called staggering. race. He, well, he called bridge, bridges and roads racist. Who says that? What does that mean? This was the transportation secretary. Thank you, Joe Biden. So it, it just, you know, understand <clears throat> issues are the most important thing. Look at inflation, okay? That's killed people. The, the, the cost of groceries, the cost of gas, that's because of Biden. Don't let anybody fool you. I've had people say to me, well, it's really Trump's fault because the, you know, uh, Trump's policies created what Biden inherited. That's not true because Biden is the one that stopped the pipeline, which increased the cost of gas. I've gone over this before. When gas goes up, transportation goes up, products go up. Everything goes so, up. So, you know. <clears throat> and don't forget that this administration is a big proponent of the Green New Deal. The Green New Deal, they don't want any fossil fuels. So the Biden-Harris administration has made it difficult for the people in this industry, in the oil <coughs> industry and the gas industry, to get permits. They say that they have allowed this thing, these things to go on, the drilling, but they won't give the permits out. They, they, they canceled a, a lot of the permits. In the meantime, what's happening? The price of gas, the price of heating your home has gone out of sight, particularly if you have gas. I keep my house down pretty low now because you can't I'd rather afford be cold it. and put on a sweatshirt yep. because I don't, you know, the cost is, is incredible. And the cost of food, forget it. If... <clears throat> A, a young couple or an older couple go into the grocery store, you cannot come out of there just buying necessities, perhaps with no meat, because I have to do that. Under, you can't get under $100. Mm. So how do people who, with families, how do they afford to feed their families? Well, they make cutbacks and everything else. 
Yeah. We're, things are going to get better yeah. starting January 20th. Yeah. Uh, and they're going to get better because we have a business person. Now, I was, I've said to you before, Trump was not my first choice. But he was the best choice that we had. And we have an obligation to let him try and get something done right. Because the past four years have been a disaster. Just don't forget the two wars that we're in now. Okay, there were no wars under Trump before. There was under Obama. And quite frankly, it is Obama and Biden that have financed the wars uh, for Ukraine and Israel by giving money to the Russians and giving money to Iran. So keep that in mind. Okay, if it wasn't for Biden, there wouldn't be any wars. <clears throat> well, our time is almost up, up, but I do want to allay some of the fears that you are experience, experiencing because of the propaganda put out by the newspapers, especially in Massachusetts, the Boston Globe, even the Herald, uh, <clears throat> and from the mainstream media on television, CNN, MSNBC, you know the whole routine. Uh, PBS, uh, they're trying to keep you fearful. Don't fall for it. We have to wait and see what happens. This new president coming in is a, a very responsible man. He's gone through everything to get to where he is. And he's put up with a lot of nonsense and criminal behavior, quite frankly, on the part of the Department of Justice. Uh, <clears throat> and Criminal behavior on the part of our government. Uh, yeah, uh, against a citizen. And, you know... It's, it's not right. So I think that, you know, <clears throat> we have to keep our eyes on things. We have to read and watch a variety of different media in order to keep informed. That's how you really make your judgment. Don't depend on one media to tell you the truth because more often than not, they're exaggerating everything. So keep reading, keep watching. We will tell you the truth. And Be objective in your thoughts. Yes. And remember what Trump said, the media is one of our biggest enemies. Yeah. And the reason is because they're not objective. And you need critical thinking. You need to develop it in yourselves. You need to develop it in your children. Thank you very much. We will see you next time.